What's going on guys, Lotus What Ifs here, um, I'm starting a new video, hmm. yeah, I'm starting a new video, why, because I feel like it, and I don't think anyone has ever made this video in particular before, I know they introduced, well, these type of beings, but, well, this particular, what if, not really, alright, so, hmm, um, this is gonna be a unique type what if. Oh, wow. And to be honest, um, I feel like this ref this actual what if refers to my thoughts of, like, how I feel about myself. Not, like, the things that happen in my life. Like, anything I say in here does not happen in my life. So, don't get worried and start calling the cops and shit like that. Don't worry, they never happen in my life. And they don't, they, they are not going to happen. So, don't worry. Alright, so... Yeah, um, this what if is going to involve being, hmm, neglected, framed, abandoned, betrayed, and so forth, so, yeah, and being kicked out, ah, almost forgot about that one, so, yeah, so, this what if is going to be what if Deku was an error in the code of life and death in existence. Don't, Izuku's nails are not that pink color by the way. It's just his eyes that are pink, alright? Why? Because I wanted to, alright? So yeah. So, we start off... Not in heaven or hell or some shit like that. In the outer reaches of the world. Not existence. No, I mean existence. The outer reaches of existence or the world. I'm not talking about the universe or galaxy, no. Like, it's far beyond that. It's between all of those, alright? We stop at the goddess of existence. She is currently creating Izuku. On this type of computer type thing. It's kind of like a status thing. Like an update status thing. But with her creating the person. So. The person she's creating is Izuku. And she is really happy. Why? Because... Izuku, to her, is somebody that will change, well, the future of his world. Not his world, but his planet. So, she's making his status and stuff like that. And bear in mind, I'm going to say this now. In life, in, in every universe, galaxy, multiverse, whatever it is, she cannot interfere with it. And I'm going to be putting in a power that I have already put in. And that power was in, I think, it was either between framed or abandoned, but most likely framed. I'll probably be using it and kicked out of, U of UA2, but for not right now. And that power is the world binding chain. But there's a difference. The world binding chain is not used for just capturing some people now or just chaining them down. In this one, the world binding chain stops her from, well, interfering with life in existence universe. Unless it's a god that is, well, weaker than her and stronger than that person, they are the only people that can interfere with her life. But the mistake she's about to do will not only make it so that she has to personally interfere with that person's life, but none of the gods cannot, and I mean cannot, interfere with it. So, she's making his status and stuff like that. So, as she's doing that, she falls asleep on this keyboard type thing. It's basically like a tablet. She falls asleep on it, on the keyboard type thing. And she's sleeping and she's drooling. Yes, because she's enjoying her sleep. She hasn't had a peaceful dream 
ever since. Well, a lot of things has been happening with the gods. A lot of gods have been arguing with each other, and she's been liberating them, basically. And she hasn't had a peaceful sleep in a few days. So, this is the only moment and opportunity she gets it. So, the ship for this is going to be that the goddess and, Iz and Hagakore x Izuku. So, yeah. So... While she's drooling, the drool, it slips between, well, three keyboards. And as we all know, one tear from a goddess is enough to, well, create an ocean. So, she drools, and the saliva is going between cracks in the keyboards. Basically, the lines, basically. And it slips between two of them. And while it did that, it, it messed up the control key making it an error key and when she did that the air the control key turned into an error key and she clicked on it by accident while moving her finger and the error keys refreshed the page and made it so that well new attributes could be put in so let me explain first she puts ability. These abilities will be passive. The first ability will be that he can he has well the eyes of existence or the rainbow spectacle eyes or the clover eyes to be exact. Hmm. Now, nah, rainbow spectacle eyes. They allow him to see anything, alright? Anything. He can even see invisible people, alright? So, yeah, the second, that's going to be it for now. That's going to be it for abilities. That ability is passive. He does not have the ability yet, but don't worry. And then we have the category of potential. And... The potential she put in was infinity. Then she put, and then was life span, which was infinity. Then was bad luck. Bad luck, it was put up to 100 mil, no, 100 million. Yes. Then comes durability. She put that as infinity. You may be thinking, oh, he'll be able to sustain those damages. No, that's not how it works. So, yeah. For bad luck, they put it at 1 billion. And like I said, the endurance thing. He will feel the pain. It's just that his body will be able to tolerate the pain to the point where it won't kill him. Alright? He'll be feeling the pain. It's just that his skin is toughened. If you haven't noticed... Even if you have a high endurance, you will still feel the pain. Doesn't matter if it's a little, or a lot, or even if it's slightly, you will still feel the pain. So, yeah. Basically, it's the toughness of his skin. That's what endurance stands as, basically. He'll still feel the pain, but it, it won't be minor. Alright? Then comes feelings and emotions. And she put all. Alright? See, you may be thinking, oh, he has all the emotions. That's so good. No, it's not. Because with those emotions came emotions that she didn't want to put in for him. Those were emotionlessness, brokenness, depression, anxiety, insomnia. So, yeah, he basically gets those emotions. Next comes the rate of getting stronger or his progress rate. And she put that as infinite, ten, mm, infinite times the speed. Or to be exact, no, not infinite times. Mm, one trillion times, basically. So, yeah. You know what? Infinite times. Yeah, infinite times. All right, so yeah. And 
after that, she clicks enter. And that basically made Izuku status. Oh, wait, no, I forgot one. That was, um, I think it was pain tolerance, I think. Yeah, it's pain tolerance. Pain tolerance is at 100, which is, well, normal human level. Alright? Normal human level pain tolerance. And she clicked enter, and it got entered. The next day... She wakes up, and she the computer is turned off, and she's thinking, huh, what was I doing last night? And she, and she remembered, ah, Izuku, let me check. And she looked, and she said, no, damn it. And she yells, no. And what she saw made her cry. Why? Because she did not want to, fe want to well, make him have that much of a bad lifestyle. She wanted him to have, well, basically the type of lifestyle as he did in canon. Basically getting bullied by Bakuko lightly, slightly and shit like that. And stuff like that. So, yeah. So, she's sad and she went into a deep depression. Until one of the gods eventually convinced her to go back to work, but that won't happen now. So, we start off on Earth where Izuku Midoriya is being... Given birth to by Inko Midoriya. At once he is born, the doctors, they throw him around. They throw him to one another. And the wind pressure is constantly hurting Izuku's head, which causes him to pass out. Then they clean him and they throw him on Inko and said, there is a child. And Inko looked at, his chi at her child and she threw him on the floor. And you'd expect, oh my fucking god, the doctors should be like, would are definitely gonna start saying, what are you doing? But they didn't. And you may be wondering, why is that? Because Izuku is a luck. Or to be precise, bad luck. Let me make this clear. His luck is currently at negative one billion. Yes, negative one billion. So, yeah, that's going to be hard to get that shit out, all right? So, oh, and he still gets one for all, and you're going to be thinking, what the fuck? Isn't that good luck? No, it's not. It's not going to be good luck, all right? Trust me on this. All right, so, hello up real quick. Okay, I took so long looking for this picture. Um, So, yeah, this is the picture of Hagakori. This is what Hagakori looks like. She be looking like bootleg Guaraka, but to be honest... Like, if I'm talking about, like, Hagakore and Uraraka, I'd prefer Hagakore. I'm not gonna lie. I prefer Hagakore more than Uraraka. Alright? So, yeah. But that's not what she's gonna be looking like to Izuku. Well, at least... Mm, or not right now. To everybody else, she looks like... Well, I'm joking. Alright. Never mind. You, you don't... I don't... I, I don't understand. So. Alright, so... Oh, yeah. That was a nice crack. So, yeah. So, Inko throws Izuku on the floor, and the doctors don't give to living shit. So, Inko does not give him breast milk. <laughs> she stars that nigga. Like I said, his bad luck is at one ne I mean, negative one billion percent. So, he does not get fed, alright? He doesn't get fed or whatsoever, alright? So, he doesn't get fed. And as he's growing up in life... Things are going somewhat swell, but not so swell. Sure, he gets food to eat, but Inko also hits him. Not all the time, but sometimes. Now it's time when he's four. He goes to the quirk doctor. The quirk doctor says he's quirkless, which makes it worse for his situation. And when they get home, Inko starts beating him. And then Inko, she has the craving. <laughs> not food craving, the other one. And she starts using Izuku as a personal toy, dildo, whatever it is, basically. So, she does that, and she's been doing that for the past, hmm, two, three, 
three years. Three years. She uses him as a toy and stuff like that. She abuses him still and shit like that. And she and she says, don't call me mom, call me ma'am. So Izuku does not have a mom. She calls her ma'am. So, yeah, after being used as a toy for three days, Izuku, he's slightly sad, but he's not in the stage where he is depressed. So, then at the age of eight, and take in mind, he's been going to school at this time, and Bakugo has been bullying him. And Bakugo bullies him worse. And none of the teachers, nor does the principal of the school, give a damn. So, yeah. So, at the age of eight, Inko, she grabs Izuku by the neck. And she walks all the way to, to, well, a beach or forest, or perhaps she drives. She drives all the way to the wilderness. And she picks up Izuku with her two hands. One hand holding her his belt and the other one holding his shirt and throws him into that forest. Now, Izuku, he is stuck in the forest and he's thinking, well, this is normal. I mean, it was bound to happen anyways. I'm quirkless. What use is there for me? So, you may be thinking, oh, is this the time you give him power? Hell no. Fuck no, you dumb. Uh Uh-uh. Izuku ain't getting no powers right now. So... He will get one power, but it doesn't involve like anything that could help him in the UA. So, Izuku, he has been hunting animals to eat. And like I said, his progress is infinity. So, when he first hunted his animal, he got really skilled at hunting. So, he got to the point where hunting was not even a problem for him. So, he's good at hunting and stuff like that. And it. So... Three years, no, not three, he's eight right now, he's eight right now, right, alrighty then, nine years later, he is 17, 17 years old, alright, UA is a college in this, because I want it to be a college, alright, so, Aizawa, he is chasing a villain inside, um, inside of the forest, the same forest Izuku was kicked in, or more presumably, the area he is in. And Izuku has set up traps to catch animals. And one of the traps go off and Izuku hears it and he runs to the place and he sees a man. And that man says, kid, get me out of here or I'm going to kill you. And he says, why are you running in this direction? And he says, that's none of your business. Then Aizawa runs in and he sees the kid and he says, hey kid, don't let him go. And he says, okay. And he does that, and he calls the other. He calls policemen and other supervisors of UA. He calls Midnight, Nezu, Mike, and Vlad King, and they all come. They arrest a villain, and they look at Izuku, and they're like, "And Aizawa says, kid, what are you doing here?" And Izuku says, "Well, nine years ago, I was well abandoned inside this forest." And I've been able to live perfectly fine due to my skills of hunting and supporting myself while making fire and drinking, stuff like that. So, they, and Nezu says, I have a proposal for you, kid. And he says, um, wh- what is it? And he, Nezu says, come here. And Izuku, he walks forward because he is self-conscious, so he's been staying well meters away from them not meters um feet he's been saying 20 feet away from them and he comes closer 10 feet and nezu says how about you come to ua with us and he says what's ua and nezu says ua is a place where we train heroes and it seems like you have an infinity and affinity for hunting and capturing and so forth so he says um Am I going to get hit there? And they said, what? And they said, no. So, yeah. Ooh. Ha, might I add. It will involve cheating. Yes, cheating. Yes, it will involve cheating. 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 All right, so, yeah. They do that, and... 
Izuku, he goes to UA with them, and he studies for a few years. And he gets really smart, and to the point where he has to, well, get taught by Nezu, but then again, Nezu can't teach him anymore. Due to the fact that his progress speed is infinity, so now he is smarter than Nezu, or at least on par at the moment. So, Izuku... He is, well, studying at the moment. He's currently studying. And we cut back to heaven. We cut back to heaven where the goddess of existence has told the gods to, well, try to fix Izuku's situation with his luck and so forth. But the gods try to do that and they can't. So they decide not to tell her. They decide not to tell her. So, yeah, that happens. They decide not to tell her at this current moment. Hold up. Oh, look at that. The fi picture finally downloaded. Hold up. All right, then, back to it. So, Izuku, he's basically training and stuff like that. He's training, he's doing really well, and so forth. So, Izuku, he gets one for all from All Might. After he's training and he's training and Izuku, he doesn't train one for all a lot. And he is able to use 20% at the moment. He's only able to use 20, no, 5%. So he is able to use 5% and the next year comes and Izuku turns 18. Now it's time for the entrance exam. The difference this time is that Izuku, he punches, he has to punch the zero pointer multiple times so yeah basically everything happens as normal except for all the events like the usj attacks and stuff like that so they don't happen in the first year and izuka he started dating uraraka in the first year but the thing is like i said his luck is negative one billion or at least it was now it is negative hmm negative 900 million 900,000 no 999 million 999,899 so that is currently 200 all right 200 off of Izuku's thing or supposedly but then it goes up to 999 million 999 1999 so yeah so it went up a hundred and that's because Uraka does not treat him like a boyfriend first she uses him as a toy basically what his mother did to him at a very young age and Izuku he's not traumatized by this or phased at all but he feels like class 1a is his friend he's actually getting friends so, he's basically talking to Class 1A and their friends and stuff like that. And then the whole year goes by, they just learn regular stuff. And, like, regular things like English, math, and stuff like that. Then the second year comes. And this is around the time of the USJ. Three days before the USJ, there was a video taken footage of of Izuku going inside Nezu's office, stealing files, and giving them to the League of Villains. But in actuality, it was actually, it was actually twice. Yes, twice joins the League of Villains earlier in this one. Why? Because I'm going to need it to work like that, alright? So, here's what happened. Twice works at a tailor store. Izuku, while he was going home, as you know, Bakugo is in his class. Bakugo starts bullying Izuku and stuff like that, and he got beat up by Bakugo after school. And his clothes was torn off badly. And Izuku, he walks into the tailor store where Twice works at. Twice noticing the uniform says, oh, so he works at UA, the place we're going to be attacking soon. Hmm, maybe we can attack it earlier and probably get rid of the new generation of heroes. So, he takes Izuku's measurements perfectly, basically. And he copies Izuku. And that same night, 
he stole the files. Now, Nezu seeing this and so forth, everybody sees this. All Might seeing this, everybody sees this. So, all the teachers are thinking, so he's the UA traitor. Hmm. So, he, so then the class hears this, and for those three days, Uraka has been cheating on Deku with Bakugo. Yes, Izuku, he does not know about this. Hagakore, she's feeling bad for him. Because he's the only one who sees through it. Because, well, anything like bad luck doesn't affect her due to her well-kind personality and, well, her, invisibi her invisibility. Let's say there is a person that is a, there is a god of bad luck. And the god of bad luck cannot see... Hagakore, so he can't really give bad luck. And any bad luck goes through her since the bad luck cannot see her physical form. So it does not know the... It does not have, well, anything to wrap around. So, yeah. So anything like bad luck can't go through her. And she looks at Izuku and she... And she can... Alright. Let's just say she can see particles of light. And she looks at... Every time she looks at Izuku, she sees... This mass weight or this bright, menacing, dark red color, which is his bad luck. And she sees that it's over one million. And she's frightened. She's, she's traumatized. Not by looking at it, but for him. So, yeah. So, she does that. Hagakori knows about this. And she's saying to herself, Uraka's a bitch, she's a hoe, she belongs to the streets. So, the next day, Midnight calls Izuku to her, well, room. Yes, let's just say she has a dorm room in this. And she uses Deku as a toy, as punishment for being the UA trader, but she did not tell him. Alright, so, they go 20 rounds. Right? 25, actually. Yeah. Cool 25 rounds. And Izuku, the tip hurts, basically. I'm gonna just say that. So, yeah, they go 25 rounds. And stuff like that. So, Uraka thinks Bakugou's thing is, better than, is bigger than Deku's. But the sad truth is, it is not bigger due to the fact that Deku, he only has that size because, well, he's been having his shit being, well, Hmm, let's just say, mm, Inko changed the DNA. After she abandoned, before she abandoned him, she used her power to change the size. She changed the cells to make it so that it is short, basically. So yeah, currently Bakugos feels like, well, better than Deku's, alright? So yeah, but that's not the actual length. So... <coughs> Izuku, he's basically in pain because the tip hurts, but he doesn't show it. So, yeah. Now we go to the day of the USJ. The day of the USJ comes and everything happens as per normal. Except when the villains come, Ojiro goes behind Izuku, slaps Izuku with the tail in the back, fracturing Izuku's back and breaking it, and... Throwing Izuku down the stairs where he broke other bones and the Nomu picks him up and goes to Shigaraki. And Shigaraki says, if any of you move, I'll kill him. Which as the class replies and says, go ahead, kill him. We do not need a traitor amongst us. And this is where the betrayal part happens. And Nomu says, and Shigaraki says, Nomu. Kill him. And before he could finish that sentence, Uraka says, Villain, wait, let me do something. And she pulls Bakugo to the front, and Deku's looking, and he sees Bakugo smile, and Uraka go in front of him, shake her ass, and then kiss Bakugo. And... Izuku seeing this is depressed. Well, not depressed to be exact. 
he he's depressed due to the fact that his class betrayed him and he doesn't even know what he did so he is in a deep depression now so he gets well beat the living shit out of and all might comes and he says and he beats the nomu and all the villains and he says where is young midoriya and they point in the direction of midoriya and all might goes to midoriya punches midoriya and says i can't believe you were my successor and he turns and walks away and deku sees him give it to bakugo and right before Deku passes out, he hears All Might say while handing it to Bakugo. Nezu said, you have been kicked out of you, A. Now, die, Izuku. And Izuku hearing this is depressed and says, hmm, maybe I should let go. And... The gods are watching this. The gods, the goddesses, even the goddess of existence. And she sees this and says, I thought you guys said that you were going to make it better. Then the god says, we're sorry. We couldn't do anything. And she says, if you can't do anything, that means he is stronger than you. And that means I can change it. And she goes into his mindscape, basically. She goes into his mindscape, or to be exact, she takes physical form, and she goes next to Izuku, and has Izuku's head on her lap. And she goes, she connects their thoughts, and she goes into his mindscape. And Izuku's mindscape, all you see is Izuku that is dead inside. And Izuku's hair, it turned white. Black, I meant, my bad. So the black hole you see here is what his hair looks like. So his hair turns black, and he looks around, and he starts walking, and then comes to a point where he sees stars. And he continuously walks forward, and he sees this person. Like I said, I was going to use this again, see? This is what she looks like inside his mindscape. On the outside, all you see is her wearing the dress, alright, and the crown. So, none of those planets and stars are actually around her. All you see is her wearing the dress. And she sees him and he says, who are you? And right as he says that, she just hugs him. She hugs him and he's wondering, why is she hugging me? Is it something that I did? Did I do something wrong? Is this a form of death? Torture? And she hugs him and starts crying and saying, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. And Izuku, he's wondering, what does she mean? And she hugs him and says, I'm so sorry for making you this way. It's my fault that you are the way you are. And Izuku, hearing those words... He feels a slight comfort, but he's not too comfortable. And in Izuku's head, he's like, M maybe I should hug her. And he lifts his hands up for once in his life to do something he thought that he would never, well, let cross his mind or at least get the chance to do, which was hug somebody. So, she hugs, so he hugs her, and he hugs her tightly, and tears start going down Izuku's face, but he doesn't know what they are. He's not showing emotions, he's just crying, and she looks down and says, Izuku, you are not supposed to be here if you have that and she remembers that his potential and progress rate said infinity and she looked at izuku and says izuku you are not supposed to be in this world this current moment 
you are supposed to be in the realm of the gods due to your potential and your progress rate. Andy Zuku says, but I, I, I want to stay. And she says, all right, you can stay, but you must let it take over. Or at least the power. Not the personality, but the power. Let your power be loosened. Let your chains be unwind, broken. And do your best. Show your will to survive. And Izuku, she says, okay. And before she leaves his mindscape, she says, I'll be waiting for you outside. And Izuku, he says, oh, okay. Hold up real quick. I think I, this kind of picture is kind of blurry. Hold up. All right, so I kind of find an unblurry picture. Hold up. Let me see. Hmm. Maybe this. Yeah, so it didn't work. All right, so. Hmm. Maybe, just maybe. Oh, looks like I can't find a clear picture. But anyways, he just got betrayed. She said things happen. Yeah, all right. So she says, I'll be seeing you outside when you get outside. And take in mind, Izuku just not did not un unlock his powers yet. He just acknowledged it, all right? Basically, he just acknowledged his power. So, yeah. He has many other powers, but, well, he won't be using all of them. So he goes to the outside world, and he basically sees him, sees her face. And he's wondering, why is it so soft under my head? And he sees that he's on her lap, and he gets up, and he says, I'm sorry, ma'am. And she says, it's okay. I mean, you're going to be my future husband anyways. And he says, oh, what, what? And she says, well... You have, well, my potential, strength, and my progress speed, so it's actually natural. And plus, you won't really find anyone suitable for you in, well, this world. And he says, are, are you going to use me like the other ones? And she says, no, I won't. As a matter of fact, I actually saw what your mother did to you. Well, not seen it, but... I had a vision of it. I didn't know it was true. Let me fix it. So she fixes him, and he gets his 20-inch back. Yes, he gets his 20-inch back and shit like that. So, yeah. So, and he looks like this now. He's going to have those pink nails, but not for long, all right? <laughs> and he won't be getting them now. So, Izuku, he does that, and she says, I, I want you to come to the god room with me. So she takes him to the gods realm, basically. It's the realm of the gods. Izuku, he's basically minding his own business. And whilst Izuku's minding his own business and learning and stuff like that, he learns of he learns magic and basically key and stuff like that. It, basically any natural energy, like life energy and stuff like that. So Izuku, he learns basically every type of well thing. And he learns many other abilities and stuff like that, such as the ability to use the world binding chain. So yeah, and he does not use the same rule as the goddess of existence. So he doesn't basically, he doesn't really have a rule on himself. So Izuku, he just watches over the universes and gets more and more knowledge. And then he decides after a after two months, to go back to Earth. He goes back to Earth with the goddess of existence, her. They go back to Earth together. And hold up real quick. Let me see if I can find a picture of what she wears. Because there isn't much of this picture. Damn, tough shit. Like I said, there wasn't much of this picture. So just imagine her in pajamas, basically. Or you could, it doesn't matter. You can imagine her in whatever you want her to wear. But to me, I want her to wear that dress, basically. So... They decide to, well, create a house in a plane. Not a stolen plane, just a plane that no one can see. So basically, it's in a remote location, basically. 
And it's still in Japan, it's just in a remote location. And they create a mansion where they live. In peace for... Two years. No, not two years. Um, Two months. And in those two months that they have been living together... The teachers uh, have found evidence that Izuku is not the Yue traitor. And that is... Well... They got attacked by villains, and... The villain said... That kid was not the Yue traitor. He was actually framed. And they felt really bad, and... So forth. So... They go looking for Izuku, but they never find him. But, one day on a crash trip, when their bus breaks down, right in, right near Izuku's house. And take in mind, Izuku's house is the only house there. And they see this big-ass mansion that looks like it could fit, well, a lot of people. And they're right. So they go and knock on the door and say, um... And they say, excuse me. Well, Aizawa says that. She says, he says, excuse me. And then she goes to the door and says, yes. And the class see her and they're like, she's beautiful. And Bakugo says, I want to hit that. And yeah. And they say, well, hmm. Ah. You're wondering, why is his eyes pink? Well, that's after, well, he earned the abilities, basically. So, Izuku, he basically looks like this and stuff like that. So, like, back to, back to, back to the present. So, she says, um, looks like your car broke down and you're looking for a place to stay, right? And they said, yes. She says, all right, then, please come in and, Yeah. So she goes, and they're just getting a tour, and they pass Izuku's room. She just casually passes Izuku's room, and they're like, what about that room? And she says, oh, don't go inside that room. And they're like, okay. So... Their room is intertwined. It's Their room is intertwined. It's just that Izuku has a separate space that's like, hmm, a whole house him. More like a chill spot. It's basically... Alright, let me describe it. This place is basically filled with cherry blossom trees and the gra and grass and stuff like that and a fountain. So basically like that, like cherry blossom trees and it's always... And it's always sunny and warm with cherry blossoms falling all the time. And the grass is green stuff like that so yeah and pond with fishes with goldfish <sighs> many fish so yeah i am if, if if you saw me take a long pause that's because i was yawning why because i'm bored all right see i want you to understand this i'm getting bored not because i'm talking to you guys but because i already know what's gonna happen Knowing what's going to happen makes it more likely that, well, you're prepared for it. So you don't really have any excitement in it. That's basically what I'm feeling, just saying the story. So they do that, and the class get a tour, and she gives them separate rooms. Izuku, he currently is sleeping inside that um private room of his private space. So yeah, he's sleeping in there, and... He see and they're sleeping and shit like that and Izuku Oh that room is always day as well. So yeah. So they basically mind their own business and don't go inside the room. So yeah. So, mm, hold up. All right. So they go to their rooms and stuff like that, and start unpacking their stuff. 
And she gives them all fresh clothes and stuff like that. Bakugo, he's still thinking, I want to hit that. Let me hit that. But he won't get that chance, alright? Because I said he won't. Because <laughs> I feel like it, alright? So, yeah. And it's nighttime. Yes, we do a time skip. They ate dinner, they took showers, and then it's time. It's nighttime. Most of the class is sleeping. Mo well, the boys are sleeping. Mina, Momo, Uraka, Jiro, and Hagakore being, well, hmm, curious about what's behind that door. They go up. They go outside. And the goddess knows what's happening. And she and Izuku, he asked during the middle of the day, who is that? And they said, well, it's your old classmates. Izuku hearing this and says, I don't want to see them. So, they go, they see the door, and they open the door, and they just see a bright light, and they're saying, ah, what? And they see this area, this beautiful area and stuff, and they see this boy, is just sleeping in it. And they go to it, and they poke him, and Izuku, he wakes up and says, huh, what, what's going on? And... He sees them, and he yells... Ah, what the hell? And the goddess hears this, the whole class hears this, even Aizawa and the teachers. They hear this, and Izuku, he says, what the hell? And she runs into the room, since there's a door connecting to the room. Like I said, the, room, the rooms are intertwined. So she runs into the room and says, babe, what happened? Shit like that. And they said, babe. And they see her compared to him, and they're like, babe. Did you kidnap him? It's just like that. He says, no, I did not kidnap him. And just by looking at him, you may be thinking, oh, he's a kid and stuff like that. But in reality, he's much older than you all. And like I said, Izuku, sure, sure he may look, he may be, well, 18 on Earth. But he has been through the realm of the gods. And he is now 1,000 years old. Or to be exact, yes, 1,000 years old, the same age as her. But it's just that she is, well, yes, they're 1,000 years old, basically, the same age. Why? Because she has been, well, she's the new goddess of existence. Since the previous goddess, the previous goddess had died of, well, her time has come. Her, she does not have any time. So, yeah, due to her potential and shit like that. So, her time will never come. She has infinite years old, but the previous goddess of existence had time, and she died, sadly. So, yeah. So, they're like, what do you mean he's older than we think? And, they say, and he said, that's none of your business. Now, leave me alone. And they're like, but who are you? And he says, that's none of your business. And he says, get out. And he pushes them away, basically, using wind pressure. And they're wondering, what the hell is his quirk? And he goes back to sleep. And they said, and the goddess said, okay, you heard him. Go back now. And they just go back. And they go. So, yeah. And so, yeah, that happened. And... Everyone goes back to sleep, and as I was still wondering, what the fuck is his quirk? So the next day, everybody takes a shower, and they want to know who the boy is, so they go to the door, and they ask the goddess, I'll let you guys come up with the name for her, and they ask, who is he? And she says, well, he's my fiancé. I mean, I thought I told you this before. They said, yeah, we know that, but what is his name? And she says, that I don't think you're ready for. It's up to him. Matter of fact, I don't think you should see him at all. And they're like, why? And she says, that's for me to know and you to possibly find out. And so they decide to go inside the room and try to touch him. And they feel like they ran into a wall. And they're like, what the hell? Izuku, 
he wakes up, he says, ah, uh, and he looks around and he says, what the hell are you doing? I literally had to force myself to yawn just to say that line. All right, then. And they're like, we want to know who you are and if you're a villain or not. And Izuku says, well, then, I want to know. How have you been treating my brother, Izuku Midoriya? And they hear the name, and they're like, oh, bro, 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 brother? And he says, yes. And they're like, uh, he, 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 he's f fine. And Izuku says, well, if he's fine, why don't I see him? I mean, he is in class 1A after all. And they're like, how do you know this? And they said, well, I was there when he got his acceptance letter. And they're like, shit, we fucked up. And Izuku says, no need to try to cover it up. I already know what happens. And they're like, what do you mean? But the whole villain attack, the betrayal, cheating, and stuff like that. And they said, what? what, what? And he says, well, that's because I'm Izuku Midoriya. And... They're like, what, what, what? And Uraraka, she tries to get with Deku. And Deku, he picks her by the throat and slams her into a wall. And does the same to Midnight. And they're wondering, what the hell? And he just walks away. Hello. So yeah, he leaves the room. He goes, he eats. And then he goes back into his room. And he sees that they're still there. And he says, get the hell out! Like, he yells it out. And they're frightened. And they get out. And... A week passes, and Bakugo, he tried to smash, but every time he went inside the room to smash, he saw that, well, open the door to smash, he saw Izuku was there. And he thought, you know what, I'm gonna confront him tomorrow. And he confronts Deku saying, hey, nerd, how dare you get a girl, a fiancé before me? You don't even deserve her. And he tries attacking Deku, and Deku just smacks him, and he sends him flying. Take in mind, all the teachers are there. And they hear a boom, and they just see Izuku walking away, and All Might yells out, Young Midoriya, how dare you hit a future hero? And Midoriya says, Toshinori Yagi, continue blabbering, and I will make sure that you'll just have more, that you'll have more than just a scar. And All Might hearing this is frightened. And he says, are you threatening a hero? And he goes to attack him, and Izuku grabs him by the head and slams him on the floor, knocking him out. And him turning to his small might form. So, yeah, that happens. And they, Deku, ya, and to, Deku Itoshinagi and Bakugo have been fighting for the time that they stayed there, which has been a week. And then it's time for them to go, and they're leaving, and Aizawa says... Midoriya, I'll tell Nezu about this and see if he'll bring me back. And Midoriya says, no need. I don't even care about you anymore. I'd rather you all dead anyways. But it's up to you, so I won't stop you. But if I don't feel like it, I won't be coming back. And he says, fine. And they leave. And that's where I'm going to be leaving it off. And yeah, bye guys.